Welcome to your complete beginner's guide to the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. We will be looking at what everything in the box is and does, your first steps and how to get started, how to attach your phone, the buttons, gimbal modes, the DJI Memo app and the best settings that will help you get the best and smoothest results with this gimbal. We will also look at a few tips and tricks like how to do a dolly zoom, epic looking time lapses and hyperlapses. The FPV mode which can simulate an FPV drone, the new clone me panorama function and spin shot mode. If you would like to rewind or rewatch any section of this guide at any time, I have put timestamps down below to make this easy. Alright, let's jump right in and take a look at the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. Let's start by taking a look at what's in the box and what you receive when you purchase the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. And the first thing you get is this storage pouch. Now this storage pouch is super handy for transporting the gimbal, tripod and accessories. Everything fits inside and it will protect your gimbal from getting scratched when you put it into a carrying bag such as a backpack for example. Looking now at the items inside. Now it's worth noting that this is the basic DJI Osmo Mobile 6 kit. There is a vlog bundle available that comes with the DJI mic which is a wireless mic system. The gimbal is also available in two colors, slate grey and the new platinum grey. If you haven't picked the gimbal up yet, I will put links to where you can pick them up along with a few accessories I recommend down in the description down below. And the first item you will see inside is the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 gimbal itself. Now this gimbal can fold up to make it really compact and easy to transport. And when you want to use the gimbal, you want to look at the top of the gimbal where you will see a padlock symbol. Now when the closed padlock symbol is above the white circle, the gimbal is locked so you won't be able to open the gimbal up. To open the gimbal up, you want to rotate the gimbal round in the direction of the arrow on the top of the gimbal pointing towards the open padlock until it can go no further. And then you want to lift the gimbal head up and away from the main body of the gimbal. Now when you do this you will hear a beep and the gimbal will automatically turn on. Now the next item you will find included is the magnetic phone clamp and this is what you attach to your phone to allow your phone to attach to the gimbal. Now this magnetic phone clamp is expandable. You can pull the two side supports out so that it will fit most phones and you simply want to put your phone in between the two side clamps. Now it's very important to make sure that this clamp is halfway up your phone and also very importantly you want to make sure that the camera symbol on the side of the magnetic clamp is pointing towards your phone's camera. You also want to make sure that the clamp is not skewed or crooked on your phone as this can mean when you come to use your gimbal that the horizon won't be level. If you have a larger phone and feel that the clamp is not secure enough, there is also anti-slip pads included which you can fit in these locations. Then to attach your phone to the gimbal, you simply want to place the magnetic clamp onto the gimbal head and it will snap into place. Now you want to make sure that the white dot on the top of the magnetic clamp lines up with the white dot on the top of the gimbal head. And when you do this, the gimbal will automatically balance your phone. To remove your phone from the gimbal, you simply want to pull the magnetic clamp off the top of the gimbal head. When you are done using the gimbal, fold the gimbal arm down. You will hear a beep to signify that the gimbal has now turned off. And then you want to rotate the top of the gimbal round until the closed padlock is above the white circle and this puts the gimbal into locked mode so that it won't accidentally open up whenever it's in your camera bag. The next item that is included is the grip tripod and this simply screws in to the bottom of the gimbal. Now this grip tripod has three purposes. The first is to give you a larger grip so that you can hold the gimbal with two hands or to use as a tripod by folding out the legs allowing you to set the gimbal down. This is super useful for doing time lapses 
or if you're using the tracking mode on the gimbal to have it automatically track you. Or lastly, this grip tripod can allow you to raise the gimbal up higher by holding the tripod as a grip. Lastly, you get a USB to USB-C power cable and this is used for charging your gimbal. You connect the USB to a power source and then plug the USB-C end into the USB-C port on the side of the gimbal. When you plug this cable in, you will see a green light flashing on the status panel. And when the battery is fully charged, the battery level indicator on the status panel turns off. It takes approximately one hour and 24 minutes to fully charge the gimbal. And you get a max running time of around six hours and 24 minutes. So once you have your gimbal fully charged, Let's take a look at the initial setup and update the firmware if required to get the latest features and improvements. So with the gimbal turned on and your phone attached, you will first want to install the DJI Mimo app on your phone. To get this app, all you have to do is go to your phone's app store, so Android or Apple iOS store, and search for DJI Mimo. With the app downloaded and with the gimbal still on, you want to open the app and tap the device button on the top left of the app screen. The app will search for your gimbal and after a few seconds, you will be taken through to the camera view. Now, once you're in this camera view, if you see the new firmware available notification on the top of the screen, it's very important that you press this to update the gimbal. After pressing this, you will get an overview of the update, what it includes, such as bug fixes and new features, and you want to press install at the bottom of the screen. This may take a few minutes to download and transfer the update to the gimbal. And once it's completed, your gimbal will restart and you will see a tick on your phone screen. Simply press done on the bottom of the screen to finish. Now, with the DJI Mimo app open on your phone, let's take a look at what everything on this DJI Osmo Mobile 6 is and does, the port, all the buttons, and controls. Looking at the front of the gimbal, the first thing you will see is the power and mode button. With the gimbal closed down, if you press this button, you will see the battery level indicator appear in the status panel. And this will show you how much power the gimbal has left. If you open the gimbal and wait too long to attach your phone, the gimbal will automatically go into sleep mode to save power. If that happens, just press the power button again and the gimbal will wake up. If you would like to keep your phone attached when using the gimbal, but want to turn the battery off to save power without having to take your phone off and fold the gimbal down, maybe for example, if you are moving quickly between locations, you can do that by pressing and holding the power button. The gimbal will make a noise to signify it is now in sleep mode, and then to turn it back on, simply press the power mode button again. Now this button also doubles as the mode button, allowing you to change the different gimbal modes. And you can cycle through them by pressing this mode button. As you do, you will see the mode you are in showing the status panel next to the button. So the first mode you will be in by default when you turn the gimbal on is the follow mode. In follow mode, the camera view follows the gimbal's pan and tilt movements. This means that as you tilt the gimbal up or down, the gimbal will slowly tilt your phone up or down. And as you twist the gimbal left or right, the gimbal will slowly rotate left or right. However, if you roll the gimbal left or right, the gimbal will keep the phone level to the horizon. This mode works great for capturing clips where you start by pointing towards the sky or ground and then slowly tilt the gimbal towards the horizon to bring your subject into focus. Pressing the mode button will take you into the next mode, which is tilt lock. In this mode, the camera view only follows the gimbal's pan movements. This means that as you tilt the gimbal up or down, or roll the gimbal left or right, the phone will stay level to the horizon. However, if you twist the gimbal left or right, the gimbal will still follow this motion. This mode works great for shooting horizontally, moving around a subject, or walking forwards or backwards. Pressing the mode button again switches to FPV mode. In FPV mode, all three axes, pan, tilt, and roll of the gimbal follow the movement of the grip 
to mirror your movement. This gives you an incredible FPV view and allows you to capture shots that look like they have been recorded with an FPV drone. To get this effect, I recommend walking fast around your location, getting the gimbal close to trees, branches and walls as you pass. The last mode you can switch to by pressing the AM or mode button is spin shot. In this mode, if you push the joystick left or right, the gimbal will start to rotate your phone in that direction. Using this mode, you can push forward or pull back while rotating your phone to get these super creative clips. Looking further at the status panel, alongside seeing what mode you are in, we also have this system status indicator. Now, if this system status indicator pulses red, this signifies that your magnetic clamp is not aligned properly on the gimbal. If it is a solid yellow, that means Bluetooth is disconnected, so your gimbal is not connected to your phone via Bluetooth. If it shows a solid green, that means everything is good to go and Bluetooth is connected. If it pulses yellow or green, this means your gimbal is in standby or sleep mode. It will blink red and green alternately when you're doing a firmware update. And if it shows a solid red, this means abnormal status detected. Likewise, the battery indicator below this can also blink or change to indicate how much power is left. If it shows solid green, that means more than 60% battery. Solid yellow means between 20 and 60% battery. If it shows solid red, that means you have between 6 and 19% battery. And if it blinks red quickly, that means you have less than 5% battery. Below the status panel, you will see this small joystick, which allows you to move the camera around. Next to that, you will see the record or tech photo button. Depending if you are in video or photo mode, this will start or stop a recording or take an image. A single press in photo mode will take a single image or you can hold this button for burst images. Below that is the switch button. If you press this button once, your phone will switch between the front and rear camera. Now when you use the DJI Mimo app, if you switch to the front facing camera, the gimbal will automatically enter tracking mode which is where the gimbal will move automatically to keep you in frame at all times, which is great for solo filming. We will look at tracking modes more later in this guide. Pressing this button two times will switch your phone between portrait and landscape mode. And lastly, pressing this button three times will allow you to switch between video and photo mode. On the other side of the gimbal, you will see this trigger. A double press of this trigger will recenter the gimbal. If you press and hold this trigger, you will enable lock mode. Now this mode overrides any other mode you are using and will lock the angle and orientation your phone is pointing regardless of how you move the gimbal. If you press this once and then press again and hold, you will enter sport mode. This is where the gimbal's motors will move faster to keep up with your movement. This mode can be good for capturing fast moving subjects such as a car or for doing transitions. But if you want the gimbal movement to be smooth, normal mode is the best. A single press of this trigger will enable tracking mode. And to turn off tracking mode, simply press the trigger once again. Looking at the side of the gimbal, and you will see this small side wheel. Now turning this allows you to zoom in or out or change focus. Pressing the wheel in allows you to change between it being used for zoom or for focusing. Lastly, the gimbal has an extendable selfie stick, which you can use by simply pulling the top part of the gimbal away from the main body. This can be extended up to 215 millimeters for extra reach, allowing you to get extra high shots or to get closer to the ground without having to kneel down. Amazing for those of us that have a bad back. At the end of the extension rod is an adjustable head, and this can be adjusted from zero to 90 degrees. This can be super useful if you want to use the extension rod to push horizontally through a narrow gap, for example, to get these really awesome clips. Now, something that's important to know is that a lot of these buttons and functions, such as using the scroll wheel on the side of the gimbal to zoom in or out, only work if you have the DJI Mimo app open on your phone. Now, if you are out on location and you forget what these buttons do, luckily there is a handy reminder on the DJI Mimo app. Simply open the app, 
Tap the settings button, which is these three dots on the bottom left corner. Go to general settings and then click the gimbal quick start guide option. And in here, you can swipe through multiple pages showing you what all the buttons and functions do. Now, when it comes to using the gimbal, there are four different operating modes. And the one you will probably use the most is upright mode where you hold the gimbal upright. But you can also turn the gimbal 180 degrees to use underslung mode. Holding the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 upside down allows your phone to easily capture images from a lower position, such as getting close to the ground or getting close to waves on a beach, for example. Next up, we have side grip mode. Rotating the gimbal to the right or left by 90 degrees allows you to use the gimbal in side grip mode. Lastly, we have the low position mode, where you extend the belt and extension rod and adjust the gimbal head angle to low position mode. Using this low position mode allows you to record from a low angle without the gimbal getting in the way. Let's now take a look at the DJ AI memo app, what all the buttons do and icons mean, starting with the interface. Looking at the top left, and the first icon you will see is one that looks like a little house. And this is the home screen button. And when you press this, it will take you back to the DJI Mimo home screen. To get back into camera view mode, you simply want to press the blue device button on the top left of the screen. The button next to that is the Shot Guides button. Shot Guides provides step-by-step -step recording tutorials according to the scenario you're in, such as nature, in the park, in the city, lifestyle, food, festival, etc. And watching these mini tutorials can give you inspiration and guide you how to create your own videos. Moving over to the top right, and the first icon you will see is the gimbal battery level. So this displays the current battery level of the gimbal. Next to that is the mobile phone battery level, which displays the current battery level of the mobile phone. The next icon is the flash status. Now you can turn flash on by tapping the settings icon, which again is the three white dots on the bottom left of the screen, pressing flash, and then you will get different modes depending if you are in video or photo mode. In video mode, you can select always on, and this will turn your phone's flash or torch on constantly. And this can be helpful for lighting your subject if filming at nighttime. If you are in a photo mode, you can select auto where the flash will happen automatically when taking an image if the app deems it dark enough. You can select enable, which means the flash will always happen when you take an image, even if it's daytime, or always on, which again will turn your phone's flash or torch on constantly. Next, this icon will show if you have the Dolby Vision HDR setting turned on for your videos. And I will explain more about this setting and how to turn it on later in the guide. Next to that, we have the gimbal mode icon, which displays the current gimbal mode. Follow, tilt locked, FPV or spin shot. This next icon will show you if your side wheel is in zoom or manual focus mode. And lastly, we have the front back camera switch button. Tapping this will switch between the front and back cameras of your mobile. Looking at the right side of the screen and we have our recording mode selector. And you can change this by swiping up or down. Now the first option at the bottom of the list is hyperlapse mode, which enables you to record a time-lapse video while moving the gimbal around. To do this, I recommend you draw a box around the subject you want to do a hyperlapse around. This will mean that the gimbal keeps the subject centered automatically using tracking to help you get super stable hyperlapses. Then you want to hit record and start to move. Now you can either push in, pull back, or walk around your subject. And once done, you want to stop recording and you will get this incredible effect. The next option is time-lapse mode. Now a time-lapse will give you the effect of speeding up time so that events seem to happen faster. And this can be done by taking pictures at regular intervals and assembling them into a video. The resulting video shows an event happening gradually over a period of minutes or hours in just seconds. Now, if you want to record time lapses with your DJI Osmo Mobile 6, I recommend using the tripod and setting your gimbal down somewhere stable. At the top of the screen, you will see the time lapse settings. And by pressing this, you can select the time lapse duration, 
interval between each image and you can also select movement time-lapse modes. You can either have the time-lapse be stationary, you can have the gimbal move from left to right as it's capturing a time-lapse, it can move right to left, or you can set a custom motion. For custom motion, you want to move your gimbal to the starting point using the joystick, then press this blue add button to add a waypoint. Then move your gimbal to a second position you would like for your time-lapse, again using the joystick, and press this blue add icon. You can set up to four waypoints, and then once you start your time lapse, the gimbal will automatically move between them. To start a time lapse, simply press the record button on the app or gimbal, and once complete, the recording will automatically stop and create this time lapse for you. Next, we have dynamic zoom which allows you to create this awesome vertigo effect. First, you want to choose between a move out, where you will slowly walk away from your subject, or a move in mode, where you slowly walk towards your subject, and then you need to draw a box again around your subject within the safe area shown on the screen by this dashed white box. Then hit record and start to either walk forwards or backwards depending on the mode you selected to achieve this awesome effect. Next we have slow motion mode and this allows you to capture slow motion video. Now by selecting the slow motion options button on the left side of the screen, you can choose between capturing four times or eight times slow motion. Next we have your regular video mode, and this is the mode you will use to capture a normal video. After that we have photo mode, and in this mode you can capture a single image by pressing the shutter button once, and if you press and hold in the shutter button, you will capture burst photos. Now in this mode you can also set a timer by pressing the timer icon on the left side of the screen and you can choose between no timer all the way up to a 7 second timer. Now when you do this and hit the shutter button on the gimbal or the DJI Mimo app you will see and hear the timer count down before it takes an image. The penultimate mode is panoramic mode and in this mode you have three options which you can change by pressing the pano options button on the left side of the screen. You can take a 3x3 image which when you press the shutter button takes three columns of three images to create one large panorama made up of nine images. And once completed DJI Memo will automatically stitch these together. You also have a 240 degree mode which when you hit the shutter button rotates the gimbal while capturing images to create one wide 240 degree pano. Or you have the new clone me panorama mode which is where you take multiple images of you in different positions and the app will automatically stitch these together to create an image with multiple clones of yourself. Lastly we have the story mode which provides several video templates for you to choose from and it instructs you on how to take each clip. For example here it's showing me to take a 5.7 second clip where I should follow the subject from behind as shown. Once you go through and take all the clips, the DJI Memo app will automatically edit these clips together into a completed video sequence. Going back to the interface, the next button on the right side is the shutter button. Tapping this button in video mode will start or stop a recording, and in photo mode it will take an image. At the bottom is this playback button. Tapping this takes you into your phone's media library where you can preview all the images and videos you have taken. To get back to the camera view, simply tap this back button. Looking at the bottom of the screen, you will see the zoom indicator. This will show you the zoom level as you zoom in or out using the side wheel on the gimbal. If you would like to quickly go back to one times zoom, you can also tap the zoom indicator to automatically go back to one times zoom. You can also zoom in or out by using your two fingers and pinching in or out on the screen. Pressing the side wheel on the gimbal changes to manual focus mode. Now by turning the side wheel on the gimbal you can change the focus and you will notice a new icon on the right side of the screen showing your focus level. The icon on the bottom is macro focus or close focus and the icon on the top is infinity focus. And you can change your focus level using the side wheel on the gimbal to any value in between these. To get back to autofocus and zoom mode, simply press the side wheel again. Below this, we see our recording parameters, and this will display your shutter speed, 
ISO and exposure compensation value. On the left side of the screen, we can change our resolution and frame rate by pressing the resolution and frame rate button. And in here you can see we can choose a 720p, 1080p and 4K resolution and a video frame rate of 24, 25, 30 and 60 FPS. Now, by default, if you're capturing video at 1080p or 30 FPS or less, glamour effects are automatically turned on. By tapping the glamour effects icon here, you can see options such as slim, smooth, lighten and more. You can turn these effects on or off or have it on auto. And by tapping these individually, you can change the strength or percentage of each of the effects. I personally recommend for the highest quality on altered video that you turn these off by tapping the off button at the top. If you're capturing video at 4K or 60 FPS, these glamour effects are turned off and are not available. Using the DJI MIMO app with the DJI Osmo Mobile 6, you can have the gimbal automatically track you allowing you to put the gimbal down using the tripod and move around as the camera automatically follows you, which is great if you are recording yourself. To do this, simply draw a box on the screen over the subject that you want the gimbal to follow. You should see a green box appear around them and then the gimbal will keep your subject in the center of the camera view automatically. If you want to reframe your image so that the subject is not centered, maybe have the subject to the left or right of the frame, you can do this by using the joystick to move the camera after you have drawn the box over your subject and now the gimbal will continue to track you but keep your framing to the left or right. To exit tracking mode, simply press the green X icon on the top right of the tracking box. You can also control the gimbal by using gesture control, which allows you to start and stop recording without touching your gimbal or phone. To turn this on, simply press the gesture control options icon here and then turn the gesture control slider on. Below this, you have two options, follow and shoot, which means when you gesture to the gimbal, it will automatically track you and record, or shoot only, which means when you gesture to the gimbal, it will only start recording, it won't track you. Then with either of these options enabled, you can start recording by making a V gesture for one or two seconds facing the camera. Your phone's torch will flash and you will hear a beep count down for a few seconds. And once this is stopped, your gimbal will have now automatically started recording you. To stop recording, simply make a palm or stop gesture towards the camera. Again, you will see your phone's torch flash, you will hear a beep and the recording will now stop. Now this mode is actually super useful for tracking, especially if you are out recording yourself. Now when capturing using the DJI MIMO app, you have the option between automatic mode where DJI MIMO will automatically set the shutter speed and ISO for correct exposure and manual mode where you will manually change the shutter speed and ISO to get a properly exposed image. By default, you will be in automatic mode as shown by the exposure mode icon showing auto. Now in auto mode, as you move the gimbal around, the exposure will constantly be automatically changing. While recording video, this is something you don't want to happen as these large shifts in exposure can look jarring in your footage, such as when panning down from the sky for example. To prevent this, before recording you can log the exposure by pressing and holding the screen until you see this little logged icon appear on the corner of the yellow box. What this logged symbol signifies is that the shutter speed and ISO setting that the DJI MIMO app has automatically currently set is now locked. So these won't change as you move the gimbal around. And so as you move the gimbal around, the exposure won't change to prevent these jarring exposure shifts. And this will make your video footage look much more professional. To turn off exposure lock, simply just press anywhere else on the screen. If you would like to expose slightly darker or lighter, you can override the automatic settings by tapping the screen until you see a sun icon and then press and drag on this to lower exposure and drag up to increase exposure. You can also achieve this by tapping the auto exposure mode icon and then increasing or decreasing the exposure compensation value. 
As you decrease this to a minus number, it will make the image darker. And as you increase this to a plus number, it will make the image brighter. To enter manual mode, select manual mode. In here, you can manually adjust the ISO and shutter speed. Now, if you don't know what these are, briefly, the ISO is your phone camera's sensitivity to light. And the shutter speed is the length of time your phone's camera shutter is open for, exposing light onto that sensor. Changing the shutter speed can change how the motion looks in your videos. Having a shutter speed which is too low can make your videos stutter or appear choppy, so you want to avoid that. And on the other hand, having a shutter speed too high can make motion look too sharp and unnatural. Our eyes are used to seeing motion blur for example in this clip of me running. When the shutter speed is set too high, we don't see this motion blur as the camera's shutter is too fast and this can look unnatural. For the best looking motion in your videos, you want to use something called the 180 degree shutter rule. The 180 degree shutter rule states that your shutter speed should be set to double your frame rate. So if you are recording at 30 frames per second, you will want your shutter speed to be 1 over 60. If you are recording at 60 frames per second, you will want your shutter speed to be 1 over 120, for example. For your ISO value, you will want to keep this as low as possible. I keep mine set to 100 most of the time if recording during daylight. If it's nighttime, you will need to use a higher ISO value. However, the higher the ISO, the more noise and grain you will introduce to your footage. Now, if you're outside on a sunny day, you might find that setting your shutter speed to two times your frame rate and using an ISO of 100 will cause your image to be overexposed and very white. If this is the case, you will want to use an ND filter. An ND filter is like a pair of sunglasses for your phone's camera, which reduces the amount of light hitting that camera sensor, allowing you to keep the correct settings for natural looking motion while having a properly exposed image. I will put a link to the one I use, along with a few accessories I recommend in the description down below. On screen now is a quick summary of the settings I use in video and photo mode for the best results so that you can pause this video or take a screenshot to enter these settings onto your own DJI Memo app. Let's now take a look at the settings menu where you can change some of the customizable features of this gimbal. You can access the settings menu by tapping the three white dots on the bottom left of the screen. And something to know is that the settings you will see in this menu change depending on the recording mode you are in. So you will see different options depending on if you are in video or photo mode, for example. Let's start with video mode. And the first option you will see is the flash mode, where you can choose between having the phone's flash or torch off or always on. Below that is the white balance setting. Now, if you are using auto exposure mode, where DJI Mimo automatically sets the shutter speed and ISO for you, then this setting will be locked to auto, where the app will automatically set the white balance of the image for you. If you would like to manually control this, then you need to go back to the main camera view by tapping off the menu, going to the exposure mode setting and pressing the M to change to manual mode. Now, if you go back to the settings menu and tap the white balance setting, you can choose between preset options such as sunny or cloudy, or press custom and manually set the color temperature of the image by moving this slider. Increasing this value will warm the image up and lowering it will cool the image down. Going back to the settings menu, the next option you will see is the grid line setting. Now this is a super useful setting that when turned on, superimposes lines on your phone screen that will help make sure your video is level, it can help you keep a subject centered, and help you with composing your frame by using things like the rule of thirds. These grid lines will only show on your app screen and not on the recorded video. By tapping this, we have two options, grid lines and grid and diagonals. The next option, selfie flip, can only be changed when using the front facing camera and turning this on flips the image horizontally. Below that, you can decide if you want tracking to automatically enable when using the front facing camera by turning this option on or off. Next, you can turn on Dolby Vision HDR 
if supported by your phone. And turning this on will mean you get the maximum from your camera in terms of video quality. Lastly, you can turn on auto shot guides, which are the step-by-step -step tutorials according to different scenarios such as nature or city that help you to generate a video. These can be accessed by pressing the shot guide button on the top left of the screen. But with this option enabled, it will automatically be recommended when a suitable scenario is identified. Switching into photo mode now and going back to the settings you can see we have a few options. The frame setting allows you to change the image aspect ratio and you can choose between 4x3 which is a square image, 16x9 which is a more widescreen image, 18x9 and 1x1. It's important to know that this won't change how the image preview appears on the app but it will affect the final image you capture when pressing the shutter button. The reason this is important to know is because parts of the side of your image will get cropped out when using the narrow aspect ratios. Below this, the rest of the camera options are the same. Now we are currently in the camera settings, but if we tap the small icon of the gimbal on the left side of the screen, we can switch to the gimbal settings. Now in here, the first option you will see is a gimbal quick start guide, and below that, an option to change the gimbal mode. And this works just the same as changing the gimbal mode between follow, tilt locked, FPV and spin shot with the mode button. But here you can do it on screen. Below this, we have the follow speed setting. And this changes how fast the gimbal motors move when you are panning, tilting or rotating the gimbal. You can change between fast, medium and slow. Next, we have the gimbal auto calibration option. If when you put your phone onto the gimbal, it's not level, then by pressing this option with the gimbal on a flat surface, it will automatically recalibrate. After hitting start, the gimbal will make a series of movements and after a few seconds, your phone should be perfectly level. If it's still not level, you can select the next option, horizontal gimbal adjustment. And after checking the position of the clamp on your phone, you can manually override the alignment and rotate your phone to the right by pressing the plus icon or to the left by pressing the minus icon. Next is the side wheel mode where you can again change its function between zoom, manual focus or turn it off. Now you might want to turn off your side wheel if you find you keep accidentally hitting it while recording videos because if you accidentally hit it while recording you could create unwanted zoom movements or you could knock the focus off if you're using manual focus. So by turning off the side wheel, you can prevent this from happening. You can also change what happens when you press the switch button three times, and it can either change between photo or video mode, or open the quick menu. Below that, you can change the joystick speed, which is how fast the gimbal will move your phone when you use the joystick. And you can choose between fast, medium, and slow. The joystick control option can also be changed from free to horizontal and vertical only. When you change this option, you won't be able to make diagonal movements with the joystick only horizontal and vertical movement. Next, you can invert the joystick direction and choose to invert horizontal, vertical, or all. With this turned off, pulling down in the joystick will move the gimbal to point your phone down. Whereas with this turned on, pulling down in the joystick will move your gimbal to point your phone upwards. You can also invert the motion of the side wheel for focus mode, zoom mode, or both using this option below. Next, you can turn on extended tilt mode, and when enabled, the gimbal tilt angle becomes larger, meaning you can tilt it further. However, with this turned on, only the joystick can control the tilt. If you tilt the gimbal without using the joystick, with this option turned on, it will automatically turn back off. Lastly, you can turn off the sounds the gimbal makes such as the beeping when changing modes by turning off the sound option at the bottom. This can be useful if you are recording video and don't want to hear the beeps the gimbal is making in that video. Or you might be somewhere that you can't make a noise and so turning this off will stop the gimbal beeping. On the left side, we have a third setting menu option for the general settings, which you can access by tapping this icon off the four squares. In here, you can access device management where you can disconnect or reconnect your gimbal to your phone. You can change the gimbal's device name, see what firmware version you currently have installed in the gimbal. And you can also change how long before the gimbal will sleep if it's not in use. Lastly, you can turn on an option called Quick Launch. When this is enabled and you attach your phone to the gimbal, you will get a notification which you can tap to enter camera view automatically. 
As a quick summary, on screen now are the gimbal settings I use. So feel free to pause the video or take a screenshot so that you can enter these settings onto your own gimbal. Let's quickly now look at how you can create a video sequence with the DJI MIMO editor. From the camera view, press the home button on the top left of the screen. And on this home screen, the first option you can use is the AI editor, which is a super quick way to create a video sequence as using this, DJI MIMO will automatically create a sequence for you. After pressing this, you will want to select all the clips you would like in your finished sequence, then click the small white add button on the top right of the screen. The MIMO app will automatically create your sequence and you will then be able to preview it. If you're happy with the project, you can export it by clicking the export button on the top right of the screen. Another option you can use is templates. From the home screen, you can select the editor button and here you will see a range of templates recommended for you. You can preview each of these templates to see how the finished project should look by selecting it and pressing the play button. And once you find one you like, you can use it by tapping use template. Then you can again select the clips you would like to add. And once you have chosen enough clips required by the template, you can select the add button at the top right. After a few seconds, you will again get taken through to the editor where the sequence will automatically be created for you with music, effects, titles, and more. If you would like to manually create a sequence and you don't want to use a template and you want to start from scratch, from the editor option, you can select new project. And again, after you have selected the clips you would like to add and clicked add, you will get taken through to the manual video editor. Now this is a super simple editor where you can edit clips, shorten them, move them around, change their position, add transitions, effects, and more. So all that's left is for you to head out with your DJI Osmo Mobile 6 and capture some super smooth and beautiful videos, images, time lapses, and hyperlapses with it. And hopefully this beginner's guide has helped you get up and running quickly. Now, before you go, if you like this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things action cameras, drones, and gimbals, and want to know how to capture more cinematic videos and better images with them, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your game. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming videos, then please remember to click that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so that you will be alerted when one of my new videos is released. If you would like to stick around and watch a few more tutorials, then here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.